Now, I know you've heard about good vibrations, but you know what? There's never been a song written about bad vibrations, and that's the enemy of all audiophiles. Bad vibrations in your equipment, especially your turntable, but Fluence has come to the rescue. This is brand new. It just came out a few days ago, and I have it. Look. There's my, there's, well, that's me, and there's my, oh, that's my lighting fixture on the scene. All right, listen, the IB40, it's inexpensive, and it may just be the answer to your vibrating issues. Hi, I'm Bob, and you, my friends, are back in the United States of Analog, and I'm so excited today. I don't have an expensive component to show you, but I've got something that is brand new on the market. As far as I know, I'm one of the first people to get it. This could be the first review. I don't know, it's not often I get something right off the production line. But I am going to show you the Fluence IB40 Anti-Vibration, that's my stomach, base, Anti-Vibration Base. Now, I'm assuming that most people are gonna use this under a turntable. I'm not sure where the market is for this because this unit only costs $120. It's basically a turntable without the turntable. It's a, it's a plinth. It's a very dense MDF plinth. The plinth itself without the feet is over 10 pounds. Then you've got isolation feet, which are the, the usual fluence isolation feet that come to a point that kind of minimize contact to the surface. There's a bubble level built into the top of this, and we'll get to that in a second. I have some questions. It's slightly oversized, and even though it's slightly wider, and deeper than the uh, average Fluence turntable. I think it's so that you can use other turntables with it. And I can show you three or four of my turntables as they look on the isolation base, and we'll get to that. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so I can keep bringing you exciting videos like, like isolation tables. So let's get to some of the specs as I show you the Fluence IB40 isolation table in action. Well, kind of in action. It comes in three finishes, natural, walnut, gloss, black, and piano white, just like the Fluence turntables you know and love. I have an, a I have an RT81 Plus, yay. The silicon rubber feet come to a point, as I mentioned, and height adjustable, over 10 pounds of mass loaded into that MDF wood plinth. And again, it's around 120 bucks if you can get it. Now this isolation base promises improved low end reproduction, clear signal, improved imaging. It works with turntables, CDs, amps, speakers. Just about anything that makes a noise can be helped by an isolation table. But again, I suspect most people will use this for turntables because that's where isolation, in my opinion, is most critical. It seems like just about anything can disturb a turntable footsteps, uh, sound from the speakers themselves, maybe your air conditioning, anything, any movement, any sound can disturb the sound coming from your turntable, the cartridge, the stylus. I don't know. Can we get a remedy for bad vibrations for only 120 bucks? That's the question. This is incredibly cheap. Well, I shouldn't say cheap. I mean inexpensive. It's incredibly inexpensive. It, if, it, if it delivers even half of what I've already promised you, I think it's probably worth it. As you saw, I put my techniques on there. The feet overhang just slightly, maybe an eighth of an inch on each side. Depth's fine, but the sides just overhangs a little bit. I don't think that's going to be a problem. MoFi Studio Deck, which has an extra wide plinth, has a, a kind of a narrower footprint for their isolation feet. So I'm going to have isolation feet on top of isolation feet. And that's the reason I got this black one is because I think I'm going to try this with the MoFi. I think I will get most benefit from it with the MoFi. Otherwise, it's going to come down here to the bar and go under this techniques. And of course, when it comes to the Fluence table itself, my RT81 Plus or any of the other Fluence turntables, it fits on here perfectly. In fact, this is slightly wider. Now, will it work? 
And how do I test something like this? How do I test vibration? I already tried the Jurassic Park method and that really wasn't very productive. I put a, a glass of water on top of the platter and then tapped the table with my fingers. You can see here, uh, the Jurassic Park method, maybe not the most scientific. It's great for dinosaurs, not so good for isolation platters. So we'll go up to my listening room and see if we can reduce some of the vibrations up there from footsteps and other aggravators, vibration things. I don't know. I'm out of my depth. All right, I'm back down here now after some informal tests upstairs in my critical listening space. Let me give you the lay of the land up there. Fully wall-to-wall -wall carpeted in that room, in that listening room, and all of my two-channel gear, my good stuff, is either in or on the BDI cabinet. And I highly recommend BDI cabinets, and I'll put a link below so you can check them out. They're a little pricey, but man, when you get it, you never look back. So wall-to-wall -wall carpet, BDI, solid, solid foundation. In the past, I've been able to hear sound resonate from the top of that BDI uh, unit. If I tap it, I can hear the sound resonating through the studio deck. Now with the Fluence, I've got that extra layer, that extra layer there that's absorbing the sound, and I didn't detect any of that, that finger tapping sound on top of the BDI cabinet. I didn't hear it. That's, that's the good news. Now, when I gave the, the top of the unit a light, you know, fist bump, uh, yeah, it made the needle skip, as, as did the needle when I uh, jumped up and down in that room. It's on the second floor. The Fluence isn't going to solve those kind of heavy duty problems. So, you know, if that if that if you've got something that really really is causing some serious vibrations in your room, I don't think a $120 investment is going to fix that. However, this is what I call what do I call? It? I call it a peace of mind thing, a peace of mind piece of gear where you're not really sure what it does but it didn't cost you a lot, so there's just a little risk there. It probably is gonna help the situation. And it's just gonna give you that peace of mind. Maybe you'll relax a little more because you know this is underneath there. I don't know how I feel about the look of the Fluence IB40 underneath the turntable. I mean, it's a lot, right? But I guess if it comes down to better sound, then I can, I can overlook the optics of it. As far as the sound goes, again, how do you quantify something like this? Um, did it take away from the sound? Absolutely not. Did it add any detail or focus? Yeah, I think with the record I was listening to, Tom Petty's Mojo, I did feel like the bass was a little more focused. Now, was that my imagination or was that reality? We'll never know. And you'll probably never know, but you probably won't miss the $120 that it's gonna to cost to buy this either. So, you know, it's kind of worth the risk. I mean, yeah, this is probably a better solution than going down to Ikea and buying a bulky cutting board and finding some feet on your own. It'll probably cost you about the same amount anyway to fabricate your own anti-vibration platform. So I think this is a good solution and I think it's priced for the common man who drives the common van such as myself. If you've got small vibration problems or you think you do in your system, then this could be a nice economical solution. You've got three, three finishes to match. You know, I, the gloss black, impossible to photograph. That's my problem, but your problem is gonna be fingerprints and dust and I'm warning you in advance. If you've got a Fluence turntable already, you're gonna find the finish to match. If you've got another turntable, then just go with basic black, you know, and call it a day. All right, now I've got a mind twister for you, and it comes to the 25 cent bubble level that they have, they've embedded inside of that, in the center of that platform. Okay, so you level the platform. Now, if you've got a turntable with adjustable feet and you've already manipulated those to make the turntable level, is that going to be level? Okay, here's 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 my takeaway: level the IB40 and use that and use that bubble thing, and then 
either screw down or screw up the uh, the adjustable feet on your turntable uh, all the way in one direction or the other. So that's completely zeroed out, I guess. I don't know what I'm talking about right now. It's very, con it's very confusing. I think you're gonna need another bubble level at the end of the day. Put it in the comments below. What am I doing wrong? What, how would you adjust that? I think if you've got adjustable feet, So plan on that. Plan on getting another low. I get one of these. Go to the go to the hardware store and get one of these for like three bucks. I don't know why they don't sell these. I could buy a bunch of these at three bucks and sell them for like fifty dollars as audiophile levels. They're pretty cool. That's my look. I wanted to give you a first look at the IB40, the anti-vibration base or platform or whatever they're calling it. It's brand new. It's currently sold out at the time of this taping. They promise more on the way. Let me know what you think about it. Do you have vibration problems? Do you have neighbors that stomp up and down uh, above your head in the apartment complex? Or, you know, what, how do you deal with, with vibrations? Or do you think that something like this is nothing but audio snake oil? I'll accept any answer, but just put it in the comments below and I'll see you next time, my friends, in the United States of Analog. All right, so you're my producer, right? Okay, so how did I end up with a crooked hat during the whole second part of that video? Can you explain that to me? Do you not have, a, is your monitor not working? I'm not buying you a new monitor. Don't forget the hat check next time.